I'm Tim LaHaye, author of the Left Behind series and a number of other nonfiction books about prophecy. And I'm Ed Heinsohn. We're going to share with you today a wonderful discovery, a real adventure in how to understand the future. You know, if you had a book that uh, told you about what was going to happen in the past and it absolutely came true, exactly, specifically, right to every detail, and it also told you what was happening today and what was going to happen in the future, that would be one of the most prized possessions that you could ever have. Prophecy is the most amazing subject in the world. Did you know that 25% or more of this book, God's Holy Word to Mankind, is prophetic? That is, it was prophetic at the time it was written. There are 1,000 passages that were prophetic at the time that they were written, and 500 of them have already been fulfilled. And literally, that's the amazing thing. The Bible literally has fulfilled history. Actually, that's what prophecy is. It's history written in advance. And how do we know that the next 500 that have to do with the future will be fulfilled literally? Because God has so carefully fulfilled the 500 in the past. In 1948, a miracle took place. Israel was back in their land, and they have been, and just as the Bible predicted during troublous times. And what we see in the daily paper convinces us it's a trouble over there. And it's part of prophecy. One of the things about uh, uh, today's I interest in prophecy, people are driven with the confusion. For the first time, man has the capability of destroying himself right off the face of the earth. Isn't it comforting to know that's not going to happen? The Bible is not just a book. It's a library of 66 books, and throughout all of these books, and most of these authors had no time for collusion. They didn't even live at the same time. And yet, in that message, there is the prophetic tone. God has revealed himself as the author of the future. He said, I am the Lord, declaring the end from the beginning. Who but God could tell us about the end, and who but God knows about the beginning? But we're here to tell you that we have been led of God to produce a Bible that makes it all clear. Tim Lay and I had the wonderful privilege of joining with two other men and being the co-editors of the Tim LaHaye Prophecy Study Bible. Our desire was to take the entire Word of God and look at every single prophetic passage in the Bible and include study notes, charts and graphs and pictures to help us understand what does the Bible really say about the future. And Tim, uh, you know, there are some wonderful elements in this Bible that you don't find in any other study Bible anywhere else. I notice right in the middle, you have all those beautiful color charts that uh, give you an overview of the whole book of Revelation uh, and of several future events. Well, some of the best uh, PowerPoints we've ever used in public presentation, because you and I hold prophecy conferences all over the country, and people love to see this and have it explained because it almost is self-explanatory. I've wanted to put out a study Bible on prophecy for it seems like a hundred years, but I never had the opportunity nor the expertise, but you came along and we shared a passion of, of putting it out and I think you had uh, printed something like five different study Bibles at that time and so you already knew the nuances of, of putting it together and it, it's incredible how we all contributed like Dr. Jim Combs uh, contributed to the introduction to each book and I, I, I'm so thrilled with the way this comes together you find a good succinct introduction and this pie chart down here shows you exactly at a glance how much prophecy is in this book 26 percent of the book of Matthew is in in prophecy and then one of the things I wanted to see is I always got confused as a kid studying the Bible who lived at this time and who participated in this what you'll find when Matthew wrote this is signaled here and then also the contemporaries of Matthew so that on one page you get all that information and then all through this Bible you'll find that our obsession was to put the explanation at the bottom of the page where it appears. You can read the prophecy and then read the explanation from some expert that knew and studied that particular thing. And this book will guide you and to make the second coming of Jesus, for example, an exciting thing. You and I have been pastors for many years and I have found there is nothing that motivates the church like and living in anticipation of Jesus coming. Historically speaking, the first three centuries were the most evangelistic in the church's history because they, they anticipated Jesus coming at any time. And when you wake up every morning thinking, 
Jesus could come today, it makes you live a different life. You're more evangelistic, you're more missionary-minded, and you're more interested in holy living in an unholy age. The very three things that the church needs today, this book can produce it. That's why we're encouraging folks to give it as a gift to their pastors. Doesn't mean they shouldn't use it for themselves, or maybe they have a, a beloved Sunday school teacher, like one teacher who faithfully taught the Word of God, taught all the way through the, the Bible, uh, the, in both the Old and the New Testament, got to the book of Jude and closed it and said, now, next week we'll start again with the book of Genesis. Somebody raised their hand and said, uh, teacher, uh, what about the book of Revelation? Oh, we can't understand the book of Revelation. We're going to go back to Genesis. What a pathetic experience. You can understand the book of Revelation. And the many men who've been specialists of Bible prophecy around the country were contributors to this book. Let me take a, an example, Tim, of how this works. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians, uh, that little epistle that introduces us to the doctrine of the rapture of the church. When the trumpet sounds and the archangel shouts and the dead in Christ are raised and we that are alive and remain are caught away to be with the Lord. Well, when you come to 1 Thessalonians, as Tim pointed out, you have the introduction to the book, the amount of the book that's prophetic, in this case 18%, and then every prophecy as you read the full text of Scripture itself in the King James Version, then you have the notes explaining it down below so that you can understand what was that prophecy really talking about when he said in chapter 1 that we're to wait for his Son from heaven. We're to live in anticipation of the coming of Jesus Christ. It's not just, again, the events that are coming in the future, it's the person who is coming in the future. And then as we get into the fourth chapter and the doctrine of the rapture, you have an entire full-page article comparing the rapture to the return. The time you go up, the time we come back to reign and rule with Christ on the earth. And then uh, a wonderful set of charts right in the middle of the book of First Thessalonians comparing the rapture with the return, showing you that the two are not the same event. Jesus comes in the air in the rapture. He comes for his own. But in the return, he comes to the earth. He comes to set up his kingdom, and we return with him. One of the things that we try to show is that the second coming of Christ is not a questionable thing. It isn't, we hope he will come. He will come again. How do we know that Jesus really was the Messiah? Because he's the only person that fulfilled all 109 prophecies, all of which that are given in this study Bible, uh, of the first coming of Christ. And yet the second coming of Christ is mentioned almost three times as frequently as was the first coming of Christ. So I think it's legitimate to say since the first coming is a historical certainty, then the second coming is three times as certain to occur. It's just future. Now the Lahey Study Bible helps us understand what did Jesus say about the future? What did the prophets like Daniel and Isaiah say about the future? And then how can we personally be prepared to face the future when it comes? And the wonderful assurance is that we don't need to be afraid of the future. Prophecy is not written to frighten us about the future. It's written to invite us to come to Christ. And it's written then to give us confidence that the Savior that we know is the one who rules the future as well as the present. That we can trust him to work out the details of the future just like he said he would in the Word of God. And the Tim LaHaye Prophecy Study Bible will help you as a layman, a Sunday school teacher, or even a pastor understand what the Lord has said in a sure word of prophecy about future events. Jesus said, if I go back to heaven, I will come again. You can mark that down with great assurance. When will he come? How will he come? The details are explained to us in the Bible itself. The chart book is a dream come true, Ed. I've talked to you about it for years. I've always wanted to, to chart things. I, I guess I think graphically, and that's why I use overhead projector and, and PowerPoint in my teaching, so that people can see it graphically portrayed. And I remember sharing with a publisher one time my dream of putting a fold-out chart. And he said, well, Tim, it's a good idea, but it can't be done. Well, I want to show you what can't be done in this great chart book. And this is only one of 50 prophecy charts that are found in the book. The whole plan of God for the future. Well, actually, it starts with creation, goes through the Old Testament, and then goes out into the future. 
and to know that God has a wonderful plan for your life, and it's all detailed in prophecy. Those who don't study prophecy don't know what's going to happen in the future. And the amazing thing about the chart book is it's all charted out for you in beautiful color and then explained in detail as well so that you can see step by step, uh, event by event, what's going to happen in the future and uh, unfolded right out of the Word of God itself. All of the things that we'll be talking to you about today really are uh, an outgrowth of the Tim LaHaye Prophecy Study Bible. Uh, that Tim and I had the privilege of working on together as co-editors uh, along with two other men that helped us put it together and then some uh, 100 contributors that contributed to the study notes and to the articles that are part of the uh, LaHaye Prophecy Study Bible so that you can take the study Bible and you can work your way from Genesis to Revelation and every time you come on a key issue of prophecy uh, in that particular text it's noted for you right there in the Bible passage. So if you're reading 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, uh, it's all about the rapture of the church, or when the Lord comes to call us home to heaven. Uh, and uh, the details are explained for you in layman's terminology so that you can understand it for yourself right there in the text. Then if you want to see how that fits in relation to the events of the future, that's charted for you in the chart book. Another thing that God has laid in our hearts to produce uh, is the popular encyclopedia of Bible prophecy. Some people say, well, you know, I, I'm interested in these topics about Bible prophecy, and I know that somewhere in the Bible it talks about the Antichrist, or the Ark of the Covenant, or it talks about Armageddon, or uh, it talks about the rapture or the return of the second coming, but I don't know where to go to look it up. If you know the term, you look it up in alphabetical order in this wonderful study aid that will give you an insight as to what the Bible says about the rapture of the church. Uh, the time that we're caught up into the presence of the Lord, or the millennial kingdom when we reign and rule with Christ on earth, or what's going to happen in the Middle East. What does the Bible say about the events in Iraq and in Iran uh, and in the crisis in the Middle East? Uh, what does God's word say about the future for Israel? Will there ever be another temple for Israel in the future? All of that is dealt with in the popular prophecy encyclopedia. So altogether, these three books are really a veritable library for somebody to understand Bible prophecy in the future. If you've got the LaHaye Prophecy Bible and the chart book and the encyclopedia, you have at your disposal uh, the basic information on Bible prophecy that anybody could ever want to know. You really have a key to help you understand what's happening in the world today and what's going to happen in the future. One of the unique elements of the Tim LaHaye Prophecy Study Bible are these wonderful full-color charts right in the middle of the Bible. This one gives you an overview of the entire book of Revelation. The book that talks about the seven churches, the seven seals, the trumpets, the judgments, the second coming of Christ, the millennial reign of Christ and his saints on earth for a thousand years, all of it in chart form so that visually you can understand the events of the future. And then when you turn to the book of Revelation in the Bible itself, at that point you can read the notes that deal with the timing of the events in Revelation. And then at the end of this wonderful study tool is the master index to Bible prophecy, every prophecy ever given in all of Scripture. You won't find this in any other Bible on the market today. Every single prediction that was ever made, the 500 that have already been fulfilled, the 500 that are yet to be fulfilled, and then specifically the prophecies about Jesus Christ himself and about his second coming. And may I suggest that this Prophecy Study Bible does what we dream of doing, and that is making it simple, easy to understand. All you have to do is read it on the page where it's written and look up the context. God's plan for the future is so exciting. If I weren't a Christian and I heard someone extol the, the uh, expand and explain the f plan of God for the future, I think I'd want to get a, become a Christian just to become a part of it. And I, I'm hopeful that our readers will use this as a means of self-education so they can share it with others. Now let me remind you again, there are three things that are available here that will give you almost every tool that you need in your hands to understand Bible prophecy. 
the prophecy study Bible itself, the entire text of the Bible, and then all of the notes and charts and diagrams right at that very passage of Scripture. But then if you say, well, I don't remember exactly where to find that, the prophecy encyclopedia is arranged alphabetically. So you can look up doctrines like heaven uh, and the future life and eternity. You can look up the second coming of Christ, the conflict in the Middle East, etc. Look it up alphabetically and read the whole section that deals with it. And then there are lists of prophecies and passages and diagrams and charts in this book as well. And then the ultimate capstone, charting the end times. This fabulous study tool of over 50 full color charts of future events to help you understand what is happening today, what's going to happen in the future. This one chart shows you one of the great prophecies of the Old Testament that has been fulfilled, and that is the times of the Gentiles taken from the book of Daniel. And one of the things that prophecy is, and always remember this, it's history written in advance. Who can do that? Only God. Only the Bible portrays the future, and then we can look at history and find that it was fulfilled. For example, and I love to say, share this with college students, how many world empires have there been in the last 2,500 years? Just four. Just the Babylonians, the Medo-Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans. History records that. Well, the interesting thing is, Daniel, the great Hebrew prophet, told about that in the times of the Gentiles. He, he interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream, and then in, it's amplified in chapter 7 and chapter 8. And we know from history that there have only been four. And just think of all the would-be conquerors, mm -hmm. Genghis Khan and, and Mao Zedong. And Napoleon and so many oh, others, yeah. yes. Napoleon mm -hmm. tried to conquer the world by taking Africa and then going back to Europe and Russia. And as you know, he failed miserably, as did all of the others. And I like to ask college students, why are there only four? Because God said there would be only four in 2,500 years. So if we can trust him to fulfill the past as he has, we can trust him to fulfill the future. Now the amazing thing too about that prophecy in the book of Daniel is that it also tells us when those empires will come to an end in the last days. Uh, with the return of Christ and it gives you a timing prophecy so that we can understand the length of time of the times of the Gentiles until the first coming of Christ, his death on the cross, and then it also tells us how much time will elapse between the rapture of the church and the return of Jesus Christ to earth. I hope that you'll prayerfully consider these wonderful study aids that will help you understand what Bible prophecy is all about. And more than study aids, this is a spiritual adventure that you can go on as an individual or you and your family or your children or your grandchildren. Uh, you can use it uh, for a self-study at home or in your Sunday school class at church or that even make a wonderful gift to your Sunday school teacher or to your pastor so that all of you together might study what does the Bible say about the future and how can we be sure what is going to happen because the Bible says so.